Greetings everyone, my name is Ari Steel, and welcome back to Stories Untold. On our last adventure, Santa Claus paid me a visit and knocked my ass off for being such a naughty little boy and dragged me into the cold winter landscape where I then had to set off this massive siren for what reason I do not know. But there was some freaky shit going on. And I gotta say, out of everything that I played so far in this game, Episode 3 had the most tension-building scenario I've ever gone through. And it was literally sending shivers down my spine. And I'm not, I'm not using that as a mild expression. My entire body was just cold and shaking the entire time I was going through that sequence. It was freaking me the fuck out to no goddamn end. Now we're on the final episode, episode 4, titled The Last Session. And this will hopefully tie everything together and give us some goddamn answers as to what the hell is going on. I think that's enough of that for now. Hey, I like that intro. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? So it actually is a show. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. I'm in a wheelchair. This place must be starting to feel like home to you. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. I'm just in here. Okay. Are we through in the next room? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. If you say so. Boy, these guys love playing with the Inception concept. Ugh, oh, um, so... Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Okay. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. Your mind, it's like a conscious black box you your memories. Look into it. Whoa. Why are the walls bleeding? Oh, gets me every time. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world. Locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. 
anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. Okay. Guess we're going back through this again. Joy. Well, it's the only signal on the goddamn radio. Just gotta line it up. The flagpole's not outside this time, though. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Bring it in slow. Alright, code word reference, report, test, oh god, gotta get back through this again, alright, here we go. Alright, looks good. Enter, execute. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. I don't wanna! You have to face it, James. Finally. 7,000 FM. Alright, bring it up slow. And one more. At all. I've worked with Officer Henning for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused this. It's him. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Um, what the fuck is happening? No, this doesn't make any sense to me at all. You step out into the hospital ward only, it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurred. You tense up. Someone else is here. I don't want someone else to be here. What's this? You wash your hands, but in this place it feels pointless. I got an achievement though. Cleansed. <laughs> oh god. What do I do? Where do I go? Do I go back into the recording room? Oh man. Um... I don't know what to do. They're all locked. Oh. He has quite an imagination, Mr. Asian. I guess it's from the shows he's been watching. This time he described a, an A&E visit as a government conspiracy, you know, some sort of lab. It's, uh, it's interesting stuff. And it's obviously pure fiction. But I guess it's just his way of coping for now. We'll see how we progress in future sessions. If you say so, Ward 4. Well, this is where the noise came from. Uh, open the door, please. Thank you. Oh, this does not look fun at all. I don't want to do this. Uh, hello? Anyone? What? I hear water dripping. Anything over here? Yes? No? What am I looking for here? What is the point of this? Oh! There's a tape right on the chair. We found him lying there sobbing while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be here. What is fucking going on oh man okay um so where to now what was what's this room that's the office lights are on hi don't mind me coming in uh oh another tape today was the first session with mr james asian 
Although I fear it will certainly not be his last. When asked about events that have happened in the past, he confused fact and fiction and told us a story about a computer game that was talking to him. I think he was back at his own house, his mum and dad's house, and he always talked about a room with a red X, one he couldn't get in. I don't know what any of this means or what it's going to do with the accident, but I guess uh, some more sessions will maybe reveal that. We're going to try again tomorrow. I was right. I was right the whole time. I asked at the end of the last episode if we were playing as Asian from the very beginning. That just confirmed it. Holy shit. This is crazy. All right, I know I'm supposed to go in there because the lights are on, but I want to go in here. If I can't. Pre-surgery. You only caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there is no detail here. Is there anything? Oh, another tape. You honestly believe that Hennings was drunk at the wheel, and not this little shit? If he wakes up, when he wakes up, I want answers. Until then, you handle it. You write it up. I'm out. Okay. Um, you spent most waking moments in here. Oh, this is just the, uh, this is where I started. Okay. So let's just get the hell out of here then? The waiting room is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you! Don't you fucking do that to me. Don't you ever do that to me! Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you! Don't do that! God, I hate that fucking feeling! Oh, you suck! I guess I'm going towards the light! You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me one. Come on, Jules. Um. Oh, I actually gotta do this? Okay. 100 Jules. You got it. And one more. There we go. So... Can we get this on the screen, please? Oh god. Clear. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charge to 10. You got it. 200 joules. Keep the charge at 10. Let's go. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I can only go so far. Clear. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Come on, 360, hurry. How about 365? Give him a little bit of extra juice? No? Okay. Clear. Ow! Well, would you look at that? Seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x ray right away. Okay. I guess we can switch these off now. Let's get it going now, please. Cerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. Okay. Um. The drill. Do I need. Please. The drill's on. Turn that off. 
Uh, sw nope. Switch that off. We don't need that on. Or maybe we do. That needs, yeah, that needs to be on. There we are. Um. Got it. Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. Oh, no! Stay calm and try to relax while we go through the next step. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Oh! I don't think this man's ever been to medical school. Okay, so I guess we're going back through this again? Oh god, okay. Oh, it's completely different this time. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Alright, let me try to remember the layout of the house. Um, let's try... Go to hallway. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. So, there was a kitchen. Let's go to the kitchen. You say all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. The carcass that was on the table when the whole game started going on the fritz. I got you now. Um... Would my sister be around? Go to my sister. You push through, apologizing over and over to get to Jennifer. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. Um, yes, I am. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Get drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She's always She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Uh, I'm going to say, yes, I do. You tell her, yes, that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and might not fuck up so much. And maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Press enter to continue. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There is so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. Okay, um... I guess drink... You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Let's try, uh... Look around. The room is full. There is utility room and writing on the wall. Um... Read writing? Hold on. Read writing. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Okay, never mind that. So, I guess go to... Utility room. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks. A collector. Although he does actually drink them too. There is a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Okay. Um, take bottle? You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your Dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. 
Um, enter to continue. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around about you. There is, there must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. All right, I guess go back to kitchen. Go to kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. Uh, okay, let's go to hallway. You go back to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Look at Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Okay. Um. Talk to Jen? Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Uh. Look around? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, shit, uh, speak to Jen? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh, God. Go back. Go back. Oh, no, that's who the girl was. Sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Holy shit! This just got severely heavy. You are standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if, she, if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Oh, damn. Okay, um... I get... Well, go to... Let's go to the living room. You're sure your keys are in the living room? Okay. The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drink's cabinets. Uh, let's try to look around. A coffee table, a drinks cabinet, one of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Okay, look at coats. You search through all the coat, all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. Okay, uh, go outside, I guess. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning and no one else is any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Oh no. Oh, this is bad. I don't know what you are trying to use. I guess go outside? Did I type that in wrong? You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. Cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you and you step down as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits in front of the house. Okay, so now use keys. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. Let's try to use key again. 
It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Okay, start the car. You turn the key in the ignition and take, and the car roars to life. Oh no. Release the brake? You very hesitantly release the handbrake. Drive. You put the car in gear and pull out the driveway like the first time driver. Oh no. You, I am driving very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Um, ask Jen? She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Okay, go left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerator off. Confident that you are on the right road, now you loosen up and you put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Oh, go slower. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're oh, all over fuck. The place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange, there is a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow. Like slow motion. Brake? You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside... The outside joins the inside. The whole world around... Wasn't it, James? The whole world... lost it all. Your sister. Her parents. Herself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill in your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Um, oh shit. All right. Uh, remove seatbelt, assuming I was wearing one. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you stumble on the roof of the car. Oh shit, uh, get out of car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall onto your knees on the ground next to your car vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car is smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Um. Oh shit. I got evidence on me. The whiskey bottle. Uh, put, let's try this. Put whiskey in blue car. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to head to shrill. You begin to head the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. Oh no. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Go to silhouette. As you approach the man, pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident. That poor man. Me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. Jesus. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. 
planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Oh man, what is going on? Say it. Tell them. Ah, shit, what do I do? Listen to yourself. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This is the fourth. Master and James. What happened? Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. And I got myself two achievements, one that said admission and the other one that said stories told, which I guess means I 100%ed this whole thing, which is really cool because it seemed like you could easily miss a lot of the achievements in this game if not doing things specific to what needed to be done. Now, I gotta say, this game was an absolute mindfuck from beginning to end. Like, things started off a little freaky in episode one, and I liked the mechanic where everything that you were inputting in the computers started to bleed into your own reality within the game. I like concepts like that because it adds this massive case of inception, like, holy shit, like, I need to really be careful with what I do, otherwise I could potentially end up killing myself or someone else. But the fact that everything from episode one all the way up to episode four tied in so beautifully just shows how incredibly well written this game was. And I had the notion that, I think it was towards one point in episode four, I, I want to say as soon as I got control of uh, James... That I was like, wait a minute, were we playing as James from the very beginning? And it was confirmed once I started going into the rooms of the hospital. And that right there just blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe I was right. I thought we were playing as individual people per episode. But the fact that we were the same person from the very start. And the whole concept of this game was him being stuck in a coma and just trying to come to terms, either come to terms or combating with his own grievance and guilt over what he did to his sister. That right there was absolutely insane. And episode 3 alone was probably the most terrifying that I experienced because I wasn't joking when I said I was just having shivers sent through my entire body during that whole process of going through the landscape. Going through that snow, turning on those generators, and blaring on that alarm. That was unnerving, to say the least. And I honestly thought something was going to grab me by my face and just drag me into the abyss. That's how insanely terrifying it was to me. But god damn. Like, I have nothing bad to say about this at all. It was superbly written, superbly executed... The only thing I will say, however, though, if there was one bad thing I did have to point out, it would be the whole microfilm reading on episode 3. Maybe there was a way to properly zoom into those a lot more, and I just never found it. But having to go back and forth between the screen and the microfilm, having to go and memorize what it was that needed to be inputted for the commands and making sure that they were executed properly, it got to the point to where I just wrote them all down. 
I just sat there, wrote them all down, and I just cut in between having to input the command. So it just looked like I figured them all out right on cue. And was like, yep, those are it. Let's see. Hit enter. Good to go. And just completely proceeded with the story. But there was just a lot more going back and forth than I would have liked to have had in that. I, I don't know. I, I, I can understand what it was that they were trying to go for. But I feel like it was a little too convoluted for my liking. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that felt that way. But that stuff right there that went on in Episode 3, that is probably the most freakiest sequence you could possibly go with this sort of storytelling. Especially when you have the element of what you input in the computers now starts to bleed into your own reality like I mentioned before. And I was just waiting for something to come across my window during the middle of that snowstorm. It, it really got me when I heard the thud on the roof, and I even said that. I was like, that was just a thud, and it scared the fucking shit out of me. And then, going towards the end of the computer sequences, and then having something knock me out and drag me outside, it was like, what the fuck was going on? But to find out that all of that was inside of our head, like, that is just brilliant writing, to say the least. I have nothing but praise for for this game. No Code Studios, Devolver Studios. You guys are mad bastards for putting this together. I'm just going to say it outright. This is probably one of the most ingenious games I've ever played. Especially in the horror genre. And that's high praise coming from someone like me because I do not like horror games. You ask anyone that tries to get me to play this shit, I will not touch it with a 10 foot pole. And it's not because I'm too scared to play it. It's because I just don't have a genuine interest in these. And I force myself to go through these games for the sake of the Halloween season to do the whole Month of Madness theme that I do for my channel just for the month of October. And I don't have a distaste for these games as I'm playing through it. I genuinely like every second that I play through these horror games. But this one alone, this one is now the pinnacle of... Of how you write a horror game. Of how you write a overlapping story. And have it conclude full circle. This was absolutely well executed. And it's going to get to the point. My praise is just going to repeat itself. So I think it's going to end right here. I have nothing else to say about this. In terms of bad terms. In terms of good terms. It's just very, very well done. I applaud these studios that put this together. And... For something that was only four episodes long, that conveyed the story in a perfect length. It did not need to go for any more than that. I could see something like this going for episodes five and six, but I feel like that might be too long. And I want more of this. I want more games like this. This is how you do full-on horror games that make you freak the fuck out. Just by pure ambience alone from the environment. And it, it gives you such full-on immersion. It puts you in the position. Because you are controlling this yourself. It's not so much just walking around first-person style with WASD and left-clicking and all that. It's No, you're typing in what it is you want to do. And the commands are now just throwing shit at you. Making you think that you're doing something wrong. Oh, it's so funny. Fucking insane, and I absolutely love it. Alright, that's enough out of me. I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then thrust your muscle upon that like button. Keep playing it awesome, and I'll see you all on my next adventure.